on the previous episode. I'm, bring, look, I'm bringing the left side corner. I'm just running straight back with my user, giving him different looks, and we're gonna catch him lacking. Ted Hendricks finding the interception. And it was a side relief. I wouldn't really say that's a game, but it's a two position game. We're into the 34. And the what is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We got episode 113 of the No Money Spent. We got some weakening rewards. We've got some investment updates, and we finally have the the game that got me in the top 100. We're gonna do a little breakdown on that. But weakening rewards, yes, we finished top 100. I think I finished 88th in total. It's always nice. I hadn't played a full 25 weekly games for the. I think the early October was the last time I played that. It just don't have enough time really to put 20 I mean, it, it is mentally exhausting 25 games a weekend i don't know how many more times i could do it it was kind of a perfect storm where there's really no new madden content over the past like week and a, like a week so i had the opportunity i wanted to kind of fire up the stream talk to some people in the chat and what well, we got it done we got top 100 always good you know it's in the it's in the bag it's in the back pocket i get top 100 when i want to you know i know i'm more of a market guy but i can be a little bit of a gameplay guy too so yeah we got that we got that in the back pod but weekly rewards Let's just say it how it is. They aren't worth it for the amount of time you spent on the game. I want to say I got 250 to 275k from my top 100 rewards. So about 10k per game. It's just, it, maybe it's worth it in August, in September, when it's the early iteration of Madden. And you need the coins. Every coin matters. But right now, we're in December, January. It's just not worth it for the time put. It's more just about the spec. I, I, I do like, I will say, I miss the competitive aspect of Weekend League and playing a hell game and really like that, my, like the mind games involved, the chess match in Madden. But the rewards just aren't that good. Let's just say it how it is. You can see the 89 plus. We got the Savior Roads. Not the best card, but Weekend Rewards, I really hope that they, they need to adjust them for like, we're in, we're in January, 250k, 275k for top 100. It's not that much in December, January for whoever you are. I don't care. 250k for that amount of time spent and stress, not worth it. All right. Investment updates. It's been a big talk. And yes, we'll, we'll get straight to the point. Derrick Henry, frustration. Like, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with Derrick Henry. I always thought that the demand for Derrick Henry would outweigh the supply. But I guess the supply is just absurd. And now, I'm not saying to sell off Derrick Henry. Although, I have been selling some off at 330k to lazy buyers. There we go, 329, 329. Shout out to someone in Discord. They told me, hey, just listen for 330. Sometimes they sell. I have sold off a few. With Derrick Henry, what I'm doing is since I have 45 or like 47. Well, 45 now. I just want to cut that number in half to 20. I'm not like completely just discarding Derrick Henry. I'm only trying to sell him for 330k. I'm not selling for anything less. I do think eventually he gets up to that point and gets up to like 340, 350. It, but is it worth it waiting an extra two to three weeks when you could just take the coins? I'm, I'm just trying to get the coins, some of my coins back for Derrick Henry. I want to get down to that number, that, that 20 marks. I don't have an insane amount of coins invested in Derrick Henry, kind of just sitting in my binder. Marlon Humphrey, though holding on to everything his stock has been going down each each day there's not even a maximum amount of marlon humphreys on the market he's like 315 320 so we're already in profit bill for him i'm holding on to marlon humphrey i'm pretty confident he gets a three he gets to that isaiah simmons range in about a half a week a week he's he's trending towards that isaiah simmons though since there is kind of the make rights looming i think i'm just selling him off for 360k and above just to take the profit since the other three haven't really made us a ton of coins it's always good to get some coins back that we put in so i'm selling off my isaiah simmons probably gets to 400 in like a week two weeks time but i'm just going to take the 360k the 380k like the 30 40k profit i'm just going to take it and run and then ricky williams finally since he's a running back i'm kind of just like it'd be one thing if we needed coins or like we desperately needed coins like there's a coin method where you need coins but we're in this kind of dead spot of madden where we don't actually need coins to do anything so that's why i've been like really patient with my investments ricky williams I'm just selling back for 310k. I'm just gonna get all my coins back, not lose anything when it comes to Ricky Williams. Bottom under 280. So if we sell for 310, we're making our coins back. Lazy selling for 310 and just trying to get the coins back a little bit. I will say these investments have been a little disappointing. When it comes to Jalen Hurts and Jonathan Allen, though, I've already got comments about it. Just be patient with these guys, man. Jonathan Allen and Jalen Hurts are probably the two best LTD rainbow cards we've gone over the past three weeks. They'll eventually, like, Quinn Spain and Akeem Hicks are at 400k. Mike Williams, Darnell Savage, 330. Just give it a week. In a week, they'll be 330. Two weeks, they'll be 350 and probably above. Just be really, really really patient with those guys but that's some investment updates there's not much to talk about in terms of content sorry my desk there's just not much to talk about if we're being honest we're probably not going to get content we might get content this weekend like campus hero twos team standouts but probably not i'm expecting the next content drop to be tuesday next week for the team of the week but let's hop into the gameplay section now a little backstory to this game because in the previous game before we go into this next game we match up against bmg king i think that's his name in the top right i can't see it to be exact but 
we pretty much flood him right 21 nothing he throws a couple interceptions and well we're gonna speed things up this was i think late sunday night my record you could see 17 and 6 so really needing one more win to get top 100 needing 18 wins to get it my strength of schedule was pretty good so i, I was confident i really only need one game and we're gonna match up with him again now yeah i just beat him i just beat him 21 nothing it was a pretty easy game he just made mistakes i didn't really have to do anything but when it's Madden and you've played someone before, the second time going against them is always going to be tough. Especially, he runs Gun Trips tight end. Now, Gun Trips tight end, in my opinion, for, for me personally, it is a really hard defense to defend because I don't have a ton of reps against it. I don't play Madden a ton. I, I probably played a combined, I'd say, 50 weekly games over the past two and a half months, and then I played 25 games this weekend. So, I really got better as the weekend went along. But the defense I'm most comfortable, like, or the offense I'm most comfortable going against would have to be Gun Bunch tight end or Gun Bunch themselves because I run them. So I understand from an offensive perspective what you like to do. Gun Trips tight end, I don't like it personally as an offense. I'm not that good of it. So when I play it, and I only play it, let's say, one every 25, like, I rarely, rarely play it. I'm just simply not that good at it. But you can see in this game, I'm still in my mindset defensively. All right, we don't, we don't want to just sit back on them, dink and duck. I'm looking to send pressure, but right there, I'm gonna free. I froze him, and I'm like, oh, we'll actually remind it. I had Calvin Johnson in a deep blue. I don't know what went through his head here. He, he was in a deep blue. He just sprinted the quarterback. I did not click the right stick. I did not make any adjustments for whatever reason. And even if I did click the right stick, a closer defender would have sprinted at him. But I had no clue with Calvin Johnson there. I just want to throw that in there for the first touchdown. I had Calvin in a deep blue. It actually would have been a really good play call for his offensive play that he ran. And well, Calvin Johnson said, hey, see ya. Send it to the quarterbacks. They're going to score a touchdown. Go up 7 nothing. Coming back out on offense, you're going to see two straight flat throws. I like to think as my, my flat, my hot read to the flats as establishing the run. Because if you watch me play, I don't like to run the ball a lot. If I wasn't run, I'm going to go play solo challenges. So for offensively, throwing to the flats and being real patient, it makes the defense, it makes the opponent and the, their defense really have to respect your flats and really come up and play aggressive defense. I like to think throwing to the flats is like establishing the run. And later in the game, anymore you can bomb over the top it's kind of like the old school new england offense with tom brady they used to dink and dunk all first half make the defense really come up and play underneath and then eventually you'll get those over the top touchdowns and stuff like that but we're going to tie it up on a wheel route with adrian peterson seven to seven and now we're getting into the point and this is i think a big turning point in the game from a mindset perspective first quarter a minute or not a minute 27 seconds left it's seven to seven i get ball to start the second half a lot of people defensively will just play normal they'll play i don't know laid back defense at 7-7 they're not really out of the game they're still in the game however i think this is a really crucial part and a lot of people mismanage when they come to gameplay wise in my head i am thinking aggressive defense and why am i thinking super aggressive defense i do not want the worst case scenario at this point in the game is for him to clock the ball the entire first half and then we just get the ball the next time we touch the ball is in the second half so giving up a touching right there a super deep bomb i think hey it's the, that's like that's terrible right but it's really not like we get the ball back now and we have four minutes to go to the second in the first half we get ball start the second half if i just clock even take a field goal and then touchdown to start the second half i'm the lead i control everything so i really think and when you're playing defense in madden i think it's just miss i don't know i don't know how to explain it look to really like managing the clock is the one skill gap i think a lot of people don't actually think about in madden because it's really offense to be honest pretty easy to score on off i'm mean, pretty easy to score on offense defense you could say is definitely a challenge but managing the clock i think that's where the elite players really separate themselves it's a, it won me a ton of games this weekend managing the clock playing aggressive defense when i actually don't mind the opponent scoring so i get the ball back with at least an opportunity to score before halftime so you're gonna see we're in our dink and dunk offense 30 seconds left we've chewed all this clock 30 seconds left 28 Jalen hurts we're gonna step in the pocket nothing really open the wheels the skate bars is gonna get us a touchdown 22 seconds left on the clock we just got to play a little bit of defense and now we're in, and we'll be in cruise control 14 14 we get the ball start the second half he hasn't stopped us on defense yet great and we make a great tackle with cd lamb forcing to stay inbounds three seconds left that was going to be all for the first half so now coming out in the second half we don't need to chew clock. we don't need to do anything if anything we actually need to score fast because it, we don't want to give him like little time to where he could just chew clock and then just tie the game up going into overtime try to go for two stuff like that so mindset coming out of the second half is score as fast as it came but we're still you're gonna notice a lot of my gameplays it's checking down to the running back i don't know why i know it's a little like boring but it's like it's the safest pass in the routes the running backs run in this game adrian peterson we all know to be the best receiving running back of all time 
hope you get the sarcasm there but with abilities running backs catch everything Devonte adams catches everything that was a really contested corner out just always look the running back should be your first it's the safest throw and it's the just most efficient throw in Madden 22 but we're gonna get Devonte adams on the touchdown scoreboard after that great catch i think it was on third down we're up 21 14 a minute 10 left and kind of in the same scenario we don't want our opponent to chew clock we're playing a little bit aggressive defense but just the tendencies and over the course of the game we, we've kind of figured out what he likes to do def offensively but he's always gonna be he kept trying to do this all game just throw basically a quick quick streak to Devin Hester I guess it might it's my fault I got to bring my two safeties up but but coming from a defensive standpoint I actually don't mind that pass because if he wants to if he wants to throw that hot read right over my head every single play go ahead man one one of those times you will make a mistake but Tony Romo here rolling right and nothing really open nah not really he has dude wide open we all know the cover the bombs in this game the cover and every every deep post beats cover three cover four cover two doesn't matter what defense you run there's always going to be a play over the top so now 21 21 36 seconds left and i i could have clocked it here i could have went check down check down check down but when i got at the way this kind of drive worked out third and inches he was starting to bring a little bit of pressure he was doing the great thing from his perspective like he was sending a lot more pressure making me take some deeper throws and not really chew clock 328 left five seconds left on the play cup play clock winding down first and 10 we're sending a lot of people on a route he brings more pressure Devonte adams again gonna get open on a corner route and now at this point there's 320 left he's got all three timeouts i can't really clock him so just score a touchdown that's the most important thing coming from this drive second and seven we don't our flood play backside dig Devin hester possession catch and we're gonna go up seven so at this point here we go we're, we're one stop away from top 100 i am a little nervous that if he if he ends up clocking and the first play is gonna tell me everything i want to know about his play clock is, is it the play clock management he's gonna run the ball he didn't run the ball the entire game and you're gonna see the actual play he chooses the next play he's in shoe clock so off the top of my head i'm like all right he's just gonna clock 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 he scores a touchdown probably gonna go for two so you know we're gonna have to make a stop we can't really play i don't want to just give him a touchdown but it wouldn't be the worst case scenario but tony roman now in the pocket steps up throws a little bit at my cover for calvin johnson could have made a little bit of better effort makes the catch though second and eight and you can see the clock is ticking 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 he's been running in bounds to keep the clock winding we still have all three timeouts he's got all three timeouts again one defensive stop wins us this game gets us top 100 a minute 10 left the clock is ticking we're starting to send though a little bit more pressure we're sending a slot corner because he gotta you know i don't know how you speed up his internal clock in the pocket we're playing a more more aggressive defense but again just checks down to the left checks down to Devin hester and i i guess that was kind of the weakness in my defense first and 10 now 58 seconds left clock not taking because he just went out of bounds but again bringing a little bit of pressure we finally get some heat he's gonna throw it in man that's kind of the play i want back i don't really think he even saw my user was standing right behind the running back but hey man it's whatever second and three 43 seconds left again bringing a lot more pressure we're gonna play a maple on the left side and again i'm bringing my actual my right side corner on a blitz we're sending six hovering with seven we should get pressure pretty pretty fast he's letting the clock a little bit wind down he doesn't want to give me the ball back hikes the ball tony remote wheel route to the left and i mean richard sherman i guess wanted to make the tackle he wanted to hug Devin hester could have got the interception but this is the play this is the game changing play third and three 26 seconds left he doesn't have all the time in the world he can't he's only got about four or five plays even though he's got three timeouts i'm actually gonna pause it show my play art because i'm sending my my right side corner on the play the left side of my field is is gonna be covered i have a maple i have a deep blue the left side of the field i have to trust my defense my user my right my right strong safety in the purple so he's gonna come down play the flat he's probably gonna pick up the running back maybe the tight end my job as a user deep middle and deep right i'm playing really really aggressive i know he's gonna want to go for a touchdown i don't think he's gonna want to i don't know check down maybe but right off the play start you're gonna see we are gonna get pressure and as a user when you're sending a lot of pressure you have to understand that you don't have to cover for seven seconds you gotta cover for like three seconds and it's gonna be just a high low read you got the streak you got the crossing route and well we're gonna make just a judgment call we're gonna assume he's not gonna go for the touchdown i feel like he would have thrown it to the tight end a lot earlier in the play if he was going to makes the uh well tony Rowe made a great throw it just wasn't to the right team ted hendricks gonna make the interception and that is gonna be all for this game we get top 100 like i said sending pressure speed up his internal clock he wasn't used to i really didn't get a lot of pressure the entire game we finally just started sending random people sending a, an outside corner on a blitz tony romo a little fluster in the pocket is gonna have to make a read he's not comfortable with and well we made the judgment call went for the underneath route and we're gonna get the interception that's gonna be all for this game we're gonna get top 100 finishing 88 very solid weekend again 
don't know if I can play all 25 games every single week, but if you want to see me actually play games, I basically do them all on stream from Thursday to Sunday. I Joe Bruin at Twitch. We do stream at late night, but you know, it's fun. It's mostly gameplay if you want to watch me play more games. Go to my Twitch streams. YouTube is more for market content, but if you've actually been enjoying the gameplays, let me know in the comments. I might upload all 25. I don't know. That's going to be really hard for me editing-wise, time-wise, time crunch. So who knows, but that is going to be all for the episode today. Nobody spent 113. We're going to have to update the thumbnail, add another top 100 logo. I will have... I will be streaming later tonight. I don't know if we're going to do Mutt Squads. We're going to play Add Dead Seasons. I don't know exactly, but we'll figure out something. But no money spent episode 113. Comment if you have any questions. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Link to the Discord is in the description. And until next time, peace.